everyone should know this one and we should open up with this. We're going to go ahead and get started. Amen. Yeah. Ask me not, O oh gentle Savior. Heal my humble cry. this morning we come in no other name except Jesus Christ our Amen. Lord and Savior. Yes. Father God we want to thank you Father God for our lying down last night. Oh yes sir. Yes. And thank you for our early rising this morning. All right. All right. Father God that look, we open our eyes and open our heart to a day we've never seen in all the days of our life. Yes, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank With you. the blood running warm in our veins. Oh, yes, sir. You give yes, it to us the activity of our limbs. And have it keeping us in our right mind to come out to the house of worship one more time and give you praise, Father God, and give you thanksgiving, Father God. Lift you up, Father God, in this Sunday school this morning. Father God, we thank you for our pastor, Father God. Thank you for his wife and their pastor coming up at night down your highways and byways. Father God, we want to thank you for him, Father God, and keep blessing him, Father God. And give him a word for the for your people, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus this all right, morning. All right. Please, sir, give me power to teach uh -huh. your Sunday school this morning. Uh -huh. Father, open it up to the blind eyes and, the, and stony hearts, Father God, uh -huh. where they can receive your gospel, Father God. We just want to say thank you. Uh -huh. yes, You've been so good and so kind to all us. All right. We want to thank you for your grace, and we want to thank you for your mercy. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart say amen. 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 Oh, we're having a good time this morning. We have 
good Sunday school, and we thank God for being here. Uh, we give honor to our pastor, Pastor Martin Brown, our pastor and invite the first lady, uh, Sister Ruth Brown. We thank you, and God bless you. Yes, and we have a good Sunday school this morning. All right. And the Sunday school this last week was the Sunday school a protected family. And it was about the birth of Moses. All right. The events of surrounding him at that time was in Egypt. Everything was in Egypt mm -hmm. until he got him ready for departure. All right. yes, but today, today's lesson is coming from the week of October the 9th, 2022. Lesson two, uh, pressing thankfulness, background scripture, passage, passage Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verses 30 through 30, uh, chapter 32, verses 47. Printed passage, Deuteronomy the chapter 32, verses 6, 3 through 6, 10 through 14, and verses 18. Mm -hmm. And our key verse for today, and he said unto them, Let your heart unto all the words which I testify among you this day which ye shall command your children to observe to do. All the words of the law, all the words of this law, Deuteronomy, the, uh, chapter 32, verses 46, King James Version. The book of Deuteronomy. It is a good book. And the events around in this is after the departure from Egypt. Deuteronomy is the fifth book of the law. The Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. This is what we concern with today. Now, this lesson I'm going to give you something about this lesson. This lesson is about the Israelites. And it's about Moses. Moses giving them the last speech before crossing over into the promised land. Yeah, all right. And, uh, and these people was complaining people. Mm -hmm. They complained about everything like we are today. Yes, we sir. can look back at Pharaoh's soldiers when they left uh, Egypt. Pharaoh's soldiers, uh, 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 they, they hollered, Pharaoh's soldiers would kill us. But at the Red Sea, Jesus, Jesus, uh, I mean, God, he, uh, he, he protected them from the soldiers killing them. Right. But they didn't realize who God was. What shall we drink? Is what they said. They complaining again. They out in the marsh. They, they, uh, most, uh, most, most, they was out in the desert. And they had crossed over. They was out in the marsh. What would we drink? And, 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 and God uh, uh, gave them water and sweetened them up by putting a tree, telling Moses to put a tree in, in the water and it would turn sweet. And, and what we shall, we will, shall, we will die of hunger. And God fed them with men. They still was complaining. They didn't have enough. And we will die of thirst. And God gave them water from the rock. And you know the lesson is that God is the rock. Right. He was the rock when they was in Egypt. He was the rock when they was out of Egypt. Yes, and he was the rock when they was in desert. He was the rock when they were there. Amen. He's still the rock today. He that same rock. Yeah. He hadn't changed. And they went on and they said, oh, we, we will give, uh, who going to give us meat? And God sent them quail. Yes, sir. 
They complained about eating. They had plenty of back then when they was in Egypt, but they ain't got nothing to eat. Who going to feed us? But God fed them with quail. He sent them quail. And we would never, we would never conquer the promised land. You brought us out in the weary land. And God spared the people. But they wandered for 40 years. He, won, he kept on where it took eight, it could have took him eleven days to leave Egypt and cross over in the promised land. But he took them out for a reason for 40 years. They were complaining people. This is where the lesson is at today. And there is no water. And Moses spoke, smoked the rock. And he God is the rock. And he smoked God. He wouldn't give God praises before the people. He wouldn't praise God before the people. He was getting the praises. I did. We do that today, don't we? Yeah. And now, and there was no food, and we are sick in Adam. But God, here's what he said in Numbers 21, 21st chapter. The fifth through sixth bird. And the Lord sent fire and service among the peoples, and they bit the peoples, and much peoples of Israel died. Yeah. God don't like complainers. Mm -hmm. We all complain. Right. We complain about the, right. the, the virus today, the COVID. But I complain about it. Don't be, don't get me wrong now. You're going to find out most of them leave itself out of this neither. Right. But, but we all complain. But at a point in time, we got to trust, believe that God going to take care of us and bring us through this. Amen? Amen. 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 Now we'll get on with our lesson. The intro, the book of Deuteronomy is the most accurate, understood, and an account of Moses' last word of the children of Israel as opposing to being the law and practice of ancient Hebrew peoples. It was essential that Moses convey and commit right to writing the whole collection, tradition, and truth he had come to understand as a revelation from God before his death. Right. He had to do this before his death. Because mm -hmm. Moses was not going in the promised land. Amen. Because he disobeyed God. He told him to speak to the rock. Yeah. When you go to God, you speak to God. Yeah. You don't throw up your fist and raise your voice. You humble yourself. Before yeah. God. Yeah. And, 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 and he didn't do that. And Deuteronomy is arranged around four separate speeches that Moses delivered prior to entering in the promised land. There were four speeches that was given. Number one, um, Moses' first address was the first chapter, the, uh, the uh, first verse through the Four chapter the forty third verse address the historical prelude and the Moses second address the specific uh, stipulation of the covenant the covenant that God had given them and that's fourth chapter to the forty fourth verse uh, through the twenty ninth chapter through the first verse and the third address was the panorama from the covenant renewal. God renewed the covenant in the 29th chapter, the second verse through the 30th chapter through the 20th verse. And the false address arranged for the future. That's where we at now. The 31st chapter, the first through the 32nd chapter. That's where we at. 32nd chapter through the 47 verse, 47 verse. 
and hit read. Them, those were the four speeches. I hope y'all got this. Those were the four speeches that he gave. And it read, and each of the speeches pushes the people to reflect. Those old speeches push those people to reflect. Both to push them to reflect. It's just like if the preacher was preaching the God preaching the, the, his sermon. It's supposed to do something. It's supposed to convict us. And it's supposed to cause us to reflect. And reflect to look back on how the Lord, where the Lord brought you from up into this present moment. You didn't make it on your own. Don't ever go say that. He didn't, you didn't make it on your own. And he, uh, uh, and he said, review. Pushing him to review. To review some of the things you went on. Pull him a toe on yourself. Look back and say, what the, how did I do that? Always, the sermon, let the sermon do the work on you. That the pastor preaches, a preacher preaches, a minister, or whoever. Lord, if it's true, right. it should do something to you. Right. And remember, uh-oh, and remember how God had been with them. How God had been with you. God had been with you when you was in the hospital. He had been with you when you was uh, down and out. God had been with you. God, God been with you when you couldn't make it. He been with you when you was all alone. But God is still with you today. Right. But we got to remember that. That's what it said about the, about the Israelites. I, Israel. They got to remember all of this before they go over in the promised land. This is something they got to do. This is right now why he said up in that in that key verse. He said, set your heart Unto all the words. You got to set your heart. You got to get right. You got to get right. You know where this is where I, I always do when I pray. I always say, God, search my heart, search my mind and my soul. Anything like sin or evil. I I I I, I, I just can't go without saying that. I got anything in there that displeased him, not me. I ask him to forgive me for it. I have to remove it. Because if you say remove, you might be removing some of the kin folks or somebody else and praying. Just don't, yeah, just, just, just ask God. God know what to do. I, I, I always ask him to forgive. I mean, I'm going to leave that alone. That's enough time. And uh, then the last four of the speeches is, is the background of today's lesson. All right. Chapter 20, uh, 32 introducing the Psalms of Moses in the form of a loss or lawsuit address. Uh, common to the ancient Near East, this practice was an appeal made to witnesses to observe proceedings so as to put in their legalities beyond doubt. In line with usual court proceeding, the Lord, the aggrieved party, our complaint, our plaintiff, would offer testimony on his his own behalf about his character and conduct. This testimony would prove to be most compelling, most compelling, and Restoration. In other words, they set it up as a Moses say, "Look, I'm a witness to what happened." They say, "You, you, you claiming God didn't do nothing for you, but we're gonna show you right here. We're gonna, we're gonna let you know, and that He is the rock, and that He gonna take care of you, and He gonna open everything up." And let them see and reflect on themselves and, 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 and remember what God had did for them when they was in the wilderness up into, uh, up, up into the present time before crossing over. In other words, they can't go in here 
in the promised land as the complaining people. There got to be a change somewhere. So God, he said, Moses, this is what we're going to do. I want you to do this. Give them this speech right here before crossing over. He give them that speech before crossing over. That was the last, this is the last speech. And he put it in a courtroom setting. And he said, the song that died, he said, the, 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 the songs of Moses was a testimony against Israel as well as the, the recognition of the renewed covenant with God. It was a testimony letting them know how God had been good to them and how God is the rock, who is God is. He's been righteous and he is just God. And the invocation consists of two parts, the prayer, the appeal, and mold the testimony of the Lord's character and conduct. Two witnesses were required to validate and proceed. Uh, and, and proceed. Uh, chapter 32 casts Moses at the first and the people themselves are the second testimony. Think about it. The idea of God being the rock, he is the rock, has become the permanent feature of Israel theology during the wilderness period. That's what I talked about, the wilderness period. It was from the rock that God miraculously caused the water to spring from the rock, from God. It was also the theme he carried forth as they entered into Canaan. According to Moses, God will continue to lead his people to the rock where they could draw honey and hotted all from olive tree. Hot dog. Point toward the gospel. Point toward the Messiah. Point toward Jesus. This is all the point. Now, number one, God's greatness recognized Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter, the 3rd to the 6th verse. King James Version and the New Revived Version. We're going to read from the New Revived Version today. For I will proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. The word proclaim is to pronounce. It's to pronounce or to make known that word. The rock, his work is perfect. His work is perfect. God's work is perfect. All of his doing is perfect. His work is perfect. And, and all his ways are just. All his ways are just. They justify. They just. A favor, a faithful God without, without deceit. Just and upright is he. Yes, he is. He's just and upright. Ye, yet his uh, degeneration children had uh, dealt falsely with him, a perverse and crooked generation. They dealt falsely with God. Going back to other items as they God. Do you thus repay the Lord, are foolish, senseless people. Is not he your father who created you, who made you, and established you? <coughs> he did it all. Know it. Verse 3 started out with Moses responding to the sovereign the declaration of uh, he gave of God greatness in verse 1 and 2 with the announcement 
I proclaim the name of the Lord. He established himself as a character witness of God, grace who can testify to all of his work. Just as the assembly in a courtroom stand, stand to honor, stand to honor the judge as he or she emerged from the chains. So are the people instructed to ascribe greatness or give praises to God who gave work, who great work uh, evident for all to witness. His great work, God, all of his great work. We got we give honor to the judge when we in the courtroom. When the cup, when 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 the chamber door open, we all stand up and arrive. We give God we supposed to give God greatness when the pastor come in, when the word is, when when the pastor say stand, we stand. If the, and he'll let you know to go from there, though that can't stand, they you know, that got a problem, they you know, that's different. But that, that's that's what the pastor. But we all for to give recognition in God's greatness. And 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 next verse it said the six virtues Moses single out in verse four qualify for praise and and of and for God is one. First, God is the rock. He is the rock which is an image uh, often used in the Old Testament to describe God as stable and solid, a sanctuary and refuge. He's solid as a rock. His greatness, solid as a rock. His love, solid as a rock. His word, solid as a rock. You can go on and on. This metaphor is a ground in the geographic of the promised land. Given that the Canaan was full of rocky hills and craters, cleat understanding God as a rock will assist their attempt to negotiate the challenging terrain. As they sojourn through the land, they will ever be reminded of God's protection, stability, and reliability. In the same verse, Moses testified that God's work is perfect. He testified. He stood up for God. I'm letting you know now. God's work is perfect. If it's the word of God, it is perfect. If the word is preached and it's true, it is perfect. God is perfect, and, and, and that's the way we should, and it goes on, it implied that the plan of, the plan and purpose of it, he, let's see, implying that, that the plan and purpose he intended for his peoples are not only what is best for them, but are always carried out precisely according to his will. His will would never change. In addition, Moses said that he that they that say that all his ways are just and that he is a God of truth who is righteous and upright. Much like the open statement at the beginning of the trial, Moses' declaration that attests to the Lord character initiate legal proceeding. Such truth is inferable to and inferable in light of God uh, uh, demonstrating of these verse, uh, virtues throughout throughout their history. According to Moses, God had abundantly proven to Israel that he is just and reliable. 
this is a message that all that all would be believers would be believers can hold on to you can hold on to it the reliable and justice of God are uh, without question and are uh, simply a part of his character. God is always reliable and full of justice. These uh, attributes remind us to hold on to God and trust him in moments of uncertainty because we know that he will always come through. God will need to hold on. Uh, we're going through the pandemic right now. We're going through the COVID. But we, we must hold on because we know that God is going to always come through in the end. We're we having difficult problems. Uh, things are happening in our lives. This pandemic has changed a lot of things in our lives. But we must put our trust in God and hold on. It's going to change. God can stop it at any given time. But we just got to remain faithful and trust in him. Uh, number two. And before, God you go to and number, before you go to number two, yeah, Reverend. That's a question. Yeah, that's um, the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, Moses is, is having to redo the laws. And the reason he's having to redo the laws is because that, that generation that came out of Egypt have all died. Yes. They died in the wilderness. Yes. And this, this is a new generation. And in, in, the, in this new generation, uh, Moses is redoing. That's what the word of do the wrong and mean to redo, to redo. Uh, to do over again. Right. And he's having to redo the laws before the children of Israel cross over into the promised land. And he began this 32nd chapter, this 32nd chapter, he began uh, as if he is in court, as right. if he in court. Right. He, called, he called the first two witnesses. Uh, if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 1, it says, Give ear, O heavens, right. and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Mm -hmm. And after that, he begins to, to uh, explain God or give the character of God or how good God has been through them, especially, especially these past 40 years. Right. These past 40 years. They are just before uh, the Jordan before they get ready to cross into the promised land. There's some needed work, mm -hmm. some needed laws. And this is just the beginning of those laws as Moses redo. Well, in fact, the book of Deuteronomy is to redo right. all of the laws that was in the first four chapters, yes. first four books. Mm -hmm. uh, the heaven and the earth are the witnesses that Moses now called on as he witnessed, amen, before them the character of God. Amen. That's that's all I stop. I stop oh, there. Yeah, you, and we thank the pastor for that because we needed that. He is right. It's to renew because the old generation had died. I, this new generation, and he didn't want them to take those habits of the older generation into the promised land. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, two. God care review Deuteronomy the second twenty that thirty second chapter ten to fourteen verse uh, New Revised Standard Version. He sustained him in a desert land in a howling wilderness waste. He shielded him, cared for him, guarded him as the apple of his eye. He did. As an eagle stir up its nest and hover over its young, as it spread its wings and take them up and bear them along out of its pen. The Lord alone guided him, guided him. 
no foreign god was with him. He set him atop the high of the land and fed him with produce of the field. He nourished him with honey from the cradle and with oil of the planted rock, who from the herd and milk from the flock with fat of lamb and ram of bash bash bull and goat together with the choicest wheat you drink fine wine from the bloodiest of grapes that word bloodiest of grapes we talking about the best about the best grapes, sweetest grapes. When God give you something, he give you the best. No, as further evidence of God's faithfulness, verse 10 is a uh, continuation of Moses' review of the care, uh, care God had provided for his people. According to Moses, those in the assembly of Israel are God's chosen people whom he found in a, in a desert way, uh, wasteland and a howling wilderness, referring, of course, to their post-exodus experience. We're going to cover that. This does, doesn't imply that the desert was where the peoples of Israel began. But that is that it was where God published his covenant, established his covenant with, with them, which guided them to the present moment. The description of the Lord's solicitors Cared, uh, uh, care of the peoples of Israel was that was that he instructed he instructed and kept them as the people that the apple of his eye these are these are expressed in the most tender terms the use of the similar summer regarding the apple of God's eye referred to the pupil, the very center and most vulnerable part. This does not only indicate how precious his peoples are to him, but how God has demonstrated his love and faithfulness throughout their history. To press his point forward, Moses switched imagery in verse 11 to an eagle and its young. When the time coming for the eagle to fly, the mother will stir up the nest. Which is, which it is to, which is to aggravate her offspring and prepare it for the next phase of its uh, de development. But she will do not she will do so with careful attention as to when and how much, to the rug. This is done while the mother eagle hover over its young, spreading out her wing to provide comfort and assurance for the eaglet's first flight. When the, it does, when it does venture forth, the little eaglet eagle's parents is there to fly beneath the and 
and if necessary, catch them out on its own outspread wings. If they fall, they're catching. God catches us the same way. Uh, when, when we get ready, when we about to fall, God catches us. God hover over us. He whip us all the time. God never leave us. We leave God. And we all say, we, some, in some cases, we might say, God had left me. No, you left him. And when it does not venture forth, the eagle is in its way. Yeah. It is the, okay, it is in the manner, Moses says, that the Lord cared for his Israel, was with his, them to protect and preserve. There was no foreign God needed. A fact that generation before them uh, disregarded when they resort at, to worship, worshiping the golden calf. In other words, when Moses came back down off the mount, they were worshiping. They had made a golden calf. It's in Exodus 32. 30, Second chapter, the first through the sixth verse, they he made a golden calf, and and they were serving and worshiping, and they were naked and praying and praising and worshiping and dancing and carrying on to a, another god, and God was angry. Let's go down to. Him. We're going to skip all of We're going to skip 11 first, 11 where it says that. We're going to go down to where it says God cared a second. It said God cared for Israel extended beyond their willingness to experience. According to Moses, God's provision will follow them as they enter into Canaan. God will enable their sojourn to and through the heights of the earth so that they can eat the produce of the field. He will lead the assembly to the place where they can draw honey from the, cre from the crevices, crevices of the rocks, where beehive that would produce it, produce it and find oil from olive branches growing out of the stony rock. They will have access to crude Cur curds curds. from the cattle and milk of the flock. The best choice of wheat and wine made from the bloody of great of the grapes. The provision matched the a description of the land in the, the chapter 8, verses 7 through 9, and the many references to describe the land truly uh, flooring with prosperity, prosperity as they had the land of milk and honey. The passage of the scripture ultimately point out point to the providence and favors of God. Points to the providence and favor of God, how God treated you, how God took care of you. Israel is going to a land which is which which they will be provided for without worrying that the land will fall short of producing enough to sustain them. God has fav had favored Israel as a chosen, had chosen them to carry his name. God not only brought them from oppression to freedom, but he is going to do so in style by giving them the best of the best. 
God give us the best of the best. He's giving us the best. As we're coming, we're coming to the close of the lesson. Um, in this, in this outline, Moses remind that new generation just how good God had been to him for the past forty years. Um, he looked back. He looked back, uh, and that's what this this outline deals with. The goodness of God while they traveled through the wilderness. Um, he kept them as the apple of the eye. Yeah, yeah. And the the notes explain what that means as, as he kept them as the apple of the eye. But verse 11 is, is and, and um, the teacher did not, didn't, didn't read the, the notes on verse 11 because it talks about the sermon of the Reverend the late Reverend C.L. Franklin, yeah. but what it does, it's, it reminds the children of Israel that this is how God took care of you. When you came through the terrible wilderness, God kept, took care of you, just like the eagle take care of her young. Uh, she don't let them fall. She teaches them. Uh, she's, when, when it's time for them to move, she would move some of the comfort. In order to, in order to understand uh, what the writer is saying when it when it concerns the eagle, you got to understand how they build the nest. That's right. When when an eagle eagle builds the builds its nest, it put thorns right. in the bottom of the nest, mm -hmm. but then it covers mm -hmm. the thorns with softness. And and uh, Brother Sanders, when when it's time for the eaglets to move, then she starts to uncover. She starts to uncover some of the thorn, so it becomes uncomfortable. That's a lesson that, that we all ought to, ought to amen, uh, be mindful of. We, we allow sinners to become so comfortable. Thank you. Thank we, never, you. We, we, never, we never make a move. We, we sit right. The eagle, Moses is saying to the children of Israel, uh, God took care of you, kept you as the apple of his eye. I mean, he he was watched for you were weak and tender, and he made you, amen, he made you almost his heart's desire, but he took care of you like an eagle, like an eagle. Like, yes, sir? That's a good lesson for parents. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Because... They, they're so comfortable, we don't, we don't make a move. They lay on the sofa, eat the cereal, and we never, we never stir up the nest. Every now and then, the nest got to be stirred up. That's what the, 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 the mama eagle stirred that nest up, but what she also does, she makes sure that you're able to stand on your own. She flies beneath you. This is what God, this is what God did for the children of Israel. Rather than allow them Amen. To go back into, into, into Egypt. He took care of them. They thought they weren't going to have nothing to eat. Reverend Spears, amen, have, have already pointed out. God fed them with manna. Thought they weren't going to have no water. Gave them water from the rock. Thought they weren't going to have no meat. And God sent quail. Right. God sent quails into the camp. Right. Sounded like he sent them low enough so they could just knock them down and pick them up. Yeah. They ate so much quail, the, the Bible says they had quail running out the nose. Yes. The eagle. And that, the exam points out, parents need to take this lesson from the eagle. How the eagle stirs its nest. We, 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 we're nearing the end of our time for Sunday school, but I, I just wanted to remind that because not only sinners, but in families, we allow sorry folks in the family to just sit there. There are 50-year-old men still sitting at home with mama. That's right. Hey, oh, yeah. I, Amen. I, I don't, Amen. You're right, Joe. You're right. We got to move. We, this is a lesson not only for the children of Israel, but it's for the children of America, of America. for all of us. For all of us. Amen. Reverend, go ahead and finish your lesson. Amen. I, I, that Amen. Is, uh, Amen. Amen. We, we, we really truly thank the comment from the pastor and other that they contribute. But the pastor pointed out all that we needed about the eaglet and 
and the mayor. And we coming to a uh, close. Uh, the last uh, the, the, and, uh, the dike, and, and an indictment made. Deuteronomy the 30 chap 32nd chapter, the 18th verse, New Revised Standard Version. You were unmindful of the rock that bored you. You forgot the God who gave you birth, who made you, who made you, and who gave you new birth today. The new birth today. And I'm going to leave that with you. God is your father. When we pray, we say, our father. He birthed us. He made us. And, 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 and he regenerated us. And we are new creatures. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, uh, when you get a chance, remember, read, remember it. Uh, share it, leave it, and hear it at your leisure time. May we buy the way we stand for dismissal. All of us say, let the word of our mouth meditation of my heart, be accepted in that sight. O Lord, my Redeemer, my strength, my Redeemer. Amen. Thank you.